Hello and welcome to the fifth tutorial on using Foxstop where today we'll be looking at player object attributes in a little bit more depth. There are two types of attributes um, in Foxstop, although this is not made explicitly clear in the program itself. There are attributes that affect scheduling and calculating frequencies, um, which we'll call Foxstop attributes. These are things like the durations and pitches. Um, and then there are filters and effect attributes, which affect the sounds that you hear. We've already covered the first type of attributes, the uh, Foxstop attributes, in a previous tutorial. So now we'll look at some of the others. Um, some good examples to start with are the high pass filter and the low pass filter. And the keywords for them are HPF and LPF. Um, Respectively, so we'll get a, we'll get a player going. And we'll add a high pass filter. So what this does is that um, it filters out all of the frequencies below 4,000 hertz in this case, i.e. removing sort of the base frequencies. And setting the low pass filter to say something like 400. This only allows the frequencies below 400 Hertz through in the signal, i.e. keeping the base frequencies. Um, so I'm going to introduce a new data structure here called the LinVar. I covered VAR and time VAR class in a previous tutorial. So if you're not sure what I'm talking about, then um, give that tutorial a quick watch and come back. So um, this is quite a, a nice technique. Um, I'll start by just using normal var and set the uh, value of the high pass filter to be zero for four beats and four thousand for four beats. So the lin var, what that does. Um, so where the var holds uh, a value for a certain duration, a lin var will change its value over time linearly between the values defined when you create it. Hopefully listening to this will help clear that explanation up. You can hear the high pass filter change its value with each note played instead of for a set period of time. You can set durations to be zero if you want a sudden change in value. So we'll change this to eight and this to zero. So it will take eight beats to change from zero to 4,000 and then suddenly go straight back to zero. So for some effect attributes, there's only one keyword argument that applies to them. But for most, there are two or three. And in, the case, uh, in this case, you um, can also set the resonance of the filter to further change the sound. Um, I'll provide a link in the description to the Super Collider documentation about the resonance in the high and low pass filters as it's probably beyond the scope of this tutorial to explain how it works. Plus, I haven't got a great grasp of it myself, and I'd probably explain it wrong. Um, but I'll show you how to use it in, in Foxstop. So um, the resonance, the high pass filter is HPR, and then for the low pass filter is LPR, so low pass and high pass resonance. Um, by default, its value is, is 1. Um, so changing uh, it, it to a value between 0 and 1 will change the sound you hear. Um, and we 
we can use another limb bar to change that over time. So we'll set it between say, one, um, 12 beats. So I set the different uh, total durations of the limb bars, 8 for the high pass filter in total, and 12 for the high pass resonance to get some variation as we play it. Um, and we can do the same for the low pass filter. So, for effects that use multiple keyword arguments, there's always one parent keyword, which is HBF and LPF in these cases, um, which means that the effect is not added um, when the parent is set to zero. So even if the resonance was 0.5 or something, you wouldn't get the filter if it was set to zero, which is why I set the low pass will just start at 500 rather than zero. Okay, so I'll go through a couple of other useful effects like Vib, which is short for vibrato, so you can add a level of vibrato. And its child uh, keyword is Vib depth, which is sort of how wide the vibrato goes. Um, which I think is 0 0.02 as default. So see what happens as I change the value. Yes, yeah, so you get some pretty crazy effects. Um, so what else? So we can specify um, the reverb, so I'll get a drum going, for example, and I'll add a reverb by using the room keyword, which is sort of to represent the size of the room in which uh, the sound's being played in. And then you can change the mix of how much that's kind of mixed into the sound um, by using the verb keyword. When it sets a one, it's just the uh, the reverb that you're hearing, whereas zero doesn't actually it doesn't actually uh, the reverb doesn't affect the sound. Um, you can change you can add a delay um, by using the echo keyword. create some nice rhythmic patterns um, and that's derived from the sustain so that's 0 0.75 times the sustain value so if I change the sustain to like a quarter the echo is 0 0.75 times that um, so the delay keyword itself actually delays the start of the event, so watch out for that. Uh, some people will think the delay will be sort of the echo effect there, so... We'll use the delay every third event by half a beat. We 
you can set attributes for multiple players at once using groups. So that's the group there, round brackets, and then the name of the players. So P1, P2, and D1 in this case. So we'll get them all playing and we'll change the, uh, let's say, the high pass filter. <laughs> but you kind of get the idea there. You can also set the amplitude. Actually, amplitude's an interesting one, so I'll show you what happens first. So you've set the amplitude to be on and off four beats for all those together. Um, but if say we've got uh, something okay this asterisk is a clap sound and we want to make the rhythm out of the amplitude for example something like maybe so um, if we change that using the amp here with the group, um, it'll override that. So here, here's what will happen. So that sort of rhythm we've got going by turning the amp on, for, on and off uh, gets overridden and we just get a constant clapping every half beat. So to deal with that, we use the amplify keyword, which multiplies the, the amp. So it will keep its rhythm with the on and offs and then just multiply the amplitude. Also the same applies if we wanted to set the amp, for example, to be half, because that clap applies quite loud, or half it. Um, it means that it'll be off and on at half the level rather than at one. <laughs> Using that's quite a good way to sort of put drops in your music. I'm gonna get rid of this vibrato or vib the depth anyway because it's annoying me. Um, so, for example, we'll set the amplifier to be on for 28 beats and off for four, and it will sort of sound like feel like a drop in the music. example but you'll get the idea that's probably a good place as any to call it a day so thanks for watching and come back next time we'll be doing some more tips and tricks on using the player objects <laughs>